understand the midpoint rule, let's start with the Riemann sum again. And I've drawn two pictures here, one in blue and one in red. And both of these are Riemann sums. Both of them are rectangular approximations to the area under a function. But notice carefully the distinction between them. On the left, look at where the heights of the rectangle are defined. Each rectangle has its height defined by its left side. So the upper left-hand corner of each rectangle sits along the curve. On the right side, all of the rectangles are defined at the right side. So their height is measured by the function at the right endpoint. On the left side, we have what's called a left Riemann sum. And on the right, of course, this would be called a right Riemann sum. And if you take the same function and you take the left Riemann sum and the right Riemann sum, the left Riemann sum is going to have some rectangles that underestimate the area and some that overestimate. And then the right Riemann sum generally will flip that and have other ones underestimate or overestimate. So one simple way to kind of get the best of both worlds is to use points halfway in between. Rather than using the left side of each interval or the right side to determine the height of the rectangle, we can use the midpoint, and that's what the midpoint rule does. So we can use a middle Riemann sum, and that's what I have drawn here in green. So the midpoint rule is very simple. We just use the center of each interval to calculate the height of each rectangle. So each rectangle that we have drawn here in green has a width of delta x. And again, that width delta x depends on how long our interval from A to B is and how many rectangles we're using, how many subintervals we divide this into. You can find the total length and then divide by n, the number of subintervals, and that tells you the thickness or the width of each rectangle. And then the height here is going to be the function evaluated at the midpoint of each subinterval. So I'll use m sub k in general. On the picture here I have labeled m1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 for the six rectangles that are drawn. And in general we can write m sub k. Now if we know the coordinates of the left and right sides of the rectangle, so let's call the left side x sub k and the right side x sub k plus 1. So for instance, the first rectangle would go from x1 to x2, the next one would go from x2 to x3, and so on. The midpoint is obviously halfway in between, and to find the value halfway in between, we can just take the average of those two. So m sub k would be the average of the two x values at the endpoints. So we might write this as f of x sub k plus x sub k plus 1 divided by 2. Then the integral can be approximated if this is the function f of x the integral of f of x from a to b is approximately equal to the sum from k equals 1 to n of f of x sub k plus x sub k plus 1 over 2 times delta x. Now that looks kind of complicated when we write it down like that, but as long as you remember all we're doing is splitting this interval from A to B into n equally spaced sections. And for each section we find the midpoint halfway between x sub k and x sub k plus 1, and then evaluate the function at that point and multiply that by the width of the rectangle. So the principle is very simple, and remembering the picture, 
will be helpful. The formula looks complicated, but in practice it's relatively simple to do as long as you're careful and keep track of the points where you're evaluating this function. Let's take a look at an example to see how this plays out in practice. So for example, let's approximate an integral that we can do analytically, so we can find the exact answer for this one. And we'll use that once we've approximated it to check how good our approximation was. And we're going to make this relatively simple. We'll use four sub intervals. On the homework, you may see something like this notation. And this means using the midpoint rule with n equals 4. Similarly, for the trapezoidal rule, you might see t of 4, for instance. So notationally, that just means use the trapezoidal rule with, for instance, four subintervals. So here, we're going to divide the interval from 2 to 4 into four sections. So I'll just draw a simple number line here from 2 to 4, and then we'll divide this in half, and then in half again. And then for each of these segments, we're going to find the midpoint so that we can approximate using the midpoint rule. So we want the value halfway in between for each of these sub-intervals, these four segments that carry us from 2 to 4. So halfway between 2 and 2.5 is 2.25, then 2.75, 3.25 and 3.75. If we needed to, we could find the average of these two values by adding them and dividing by 2, but we can also just quickly see that it's going to be 2.25. Now, the midpoint rule says we're going to evaluate the function x squared at each of these midpoints. And as we do so, we'll multiply by the width delta x, which equals 0 0.5. Notice delta x equals b minus a divided by n, or 4 minus 2 divided by 4, which equals a half, or 0.5. So we'll find the height of each rectangle by evaluating x squared at 2.25, 2.75, and so on. And as we do, we'll multiply them by the width, 0 0.5, and that'll give us the area of each rectangle. So the integral from 2 to 4 of x squared is approximately equal to 2.25 squared times 0 0.5 plus 2.75 squared times 0 0.5 and so on. And this can get tedious after a little while, which is why we'll stick to generally relatively short examples with only a few subintervals. If we want to do more, we would use a computer to do it for us so that we can avoid the tedious, repetitive calculations. So I won't go through and calculate this by hand. I'll just give you the answer you get at the end of this. If you square each of these numbers and multiply by 0.5 and then add them all up, you should get 18.625 as the approximate answer for the integral from 2 to 4 of x squared. Now it turns out that this again is one that we can do analytically, so we know that this integral equals one third x cubed evaluated from 2 to 4, which equals 56 over 3.
which is about 18.7. So we're pretty close with our approximate answer here. But now we can measure the absolute error and the relative error to quantify how close our answer is to that exact value. So the absolute error in our case will be the absolute value of our answer minus 56 over 3. And because we're taking the absolute value, we can subtract in either order. It doesn't really matter because the absolute value will take care of that. This, it turns out, is about 0 0.0417. And again, to scale that so we have a sense of how good this approximation is compared to the exact value, we want to scale that to the relative error, or in other words, we want the error as a percentage of the exact answer. Notice we don't divide by the approximate answer, we divide by the exact one. So if we divide 0 0.0417 by the absolute value of 56 over 3. That works out to about 0 0.00223 or 0.223%. So a relative error of 0.2% is very small. So it's a very good approximation. And again, just seeing the absolute error, we could tell it was small, but this scales it so that different problems with very different scales of the answer, we can tell how good the approximation is for each one in comparison to one another. This percentage, this relative error, levels the playing field so we can compare answers no matter how large the answer should have been. So the relative error of about 2.2% is quite good. It's a very good approximation. So the midpoint rule, again, very simple in concept. The formula makes things look more complicated than they are. And if the function were more complicated than x squared, it would take a little bit more effort to do this step, just because we'd have to do more of a calculation at each stage. But otherwise, the principle is relatively straightforward, and you can work out problems without too much trouble. So that's the midpoint rule. Just taking a Riemann sum and using the midpoint of each interval as the point at which to evaluate the height of each rectangle.